Hello, uh, this is the third part of uh, concurrency. We're going to talk about a special class that's provided by the Android uh, library, and um, that class is called async task. So it is like an asynchronous task. It is a, p a class that is packaged, okay, and it has several methods. Some of the methods execute in the main thread, and some of the methods execute in the background. It is a very easy class to use and it enables you to run tasks in the background uh, while implementing a single or extending a simple class and that class takes care of a lot of things uh, related to messaging between the main thread updating progress uh, getting the result back from the background it takes care of all of that so it's called async task now the the problem is that the child threads are unable to interact with the ui so the Android async task is an abstract class for managing background operations that are expected to manipulate or perform asynchronous work uh, on your user interface. Now, to use async task, you have to create a subclass. You have to actually subclass async task. And there are some details related to async task. One of them is that there are some three generic types that you have to define when you are extending async task. One of them is the parameters, which is the type of the parameters to be sent to the background task. Then there is the progress type, Let's say the background task wants to update the uh, main thread with uh, its progress. So what's the type of the progress? Are, is it going to send strings? Is it going to send integers? Is it not going to send anything? In that case, it will be void. And finally, what's the result type? So the background thread works on something and then it will generate a result. So what is the result type? All the wiring between and all the communication between the main thread and the child thread is uh, hidden from the user. This async test take, takes care of, of all of that. Okay. Now, to use the async test, you have to create a subclass of the async task class that implements the method, some methods. The, 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 the required method is do in the background. And as the name implies, it's do in the background. So it's going to run in the child thread. This method actually runs in the child thread. All the other methods actually run in the main thread. So for example, on pre-execute, it's a method that is first called. So when you execute the async task, uh, this method gets called. It's usually for setting up or uh, setting up the data before the background operation. Doing the background is mainly going to receive some, inform some uh, parameters and work on them in the background. Maybe you, uh, you send it the URL of the link that you want to download a picture from or you send it, for example, say, uh, two matrices that you want to multiply, okay? And then, while the do in the background is performing its tasks, it can update the uh, main thread uh, through a method called uh, uh, publish progress. So it can update uh, the main thread with uh, its progress through a method called publish progress. When the background thread sends a message using publish progress, that message is received in the on progress update method and you receive the on progress update and on progress update runs in the main thread similarly the on post execute on post execute re receives what the do in the background returns okay and this is also executed in the main thread so what we are looking at now is an uh, an extended uh, async task we have a class which is called get images which extends async task just to show you the structure of the async task as you can see the class the class is get images for example it extends async task and you could see the three generic types and if we look at the three generic types url is the input integer is the progress and string is there going to be the result of the do in the background now if we look at it again the input is url okay so this means that see the do in the background its input is url now when you look at the progress is going to be integer that's why on progress update receives an integer similarly that your result is going to be a string that's why the do in the background returns a string and the on post execute receives that string okay so now this is the on pre execute it's in invoked in the ui thread and this is used to set up the task okay it's like a pre on pre executing okay so this means that on uh, pre-executing in the background you can set up some stuff here like for example what do you need to set up on the on pre-execute for example you might need to uh, 
on pre-execute you might need to say for example show an alert dialog for example or a progress dialog uh, or set up something in the user interface to be ready for the result then comes the do comes the do in the background the do in the background this is the run method okay so this is basically uh, uh, what is going to be executed in the background and it, it is the background operation and it also it's though uh, uh, here you can call publish progress so it can call publish progress to publish its progress and to send a message to the main thread the message will be captured caught by the on progress update method okay so this receives the message receives the progress sent by the worker and then finally when the worker is done meaning that when in the do in the background is done it returns some value okay that value is going to be passed on to the main class or to the main thread through this method which is called on post execute so when you look at on post execute it's actually called after the bugger operation is done and it's being passed the result okay another thing to pay attention to so this is the input if you look at the input progress and the result types you will see here the url is the a is the input type and you could see that this input type is going to be passed to the uh, do in the background similarly the integer which is the progress it is you could see here that it's uh, being uh, uh, the input parameter to the on publish on progress update similarly the string uh, result you could see that do in the background returns a string and that string is actually being received by on post execute okay so now let's look at a simple example very very simple example this example is we created you could see here uh, my task which extends an async task and you could see that this is an inner class uh, of the main thread okay or the main activity so it has access to the methods that are available inside the main activity thus you could see here that what i'm trying to do here in the on post execute i have a progress bar inside my layout i just retrieve it and I set the progress to zero, so I'm making it equal to zero. This means there is no progress so far. And I'm setting the maximum progress to 100. Okay. And you could see here that this is how we actually execute the, the, the async task. You create an instance of it and you do dot execute and you pass it a value here. This value is actually the input type, which is going to be the, uh, the input type. So which is going to be uh, the, an integer. So I have all of them as integers, but you could see this is the input type, and that's why they do in the background is an integer. And you could see here that uh, I could retrieve the parameter by, you see these three dots, is, this means that you can have multiple uh, a number of parameters. Okay, so you can have uh, more than one parameter. Uh, this means that you can do a thousand comma, one hundred comma, so what you receive is an array of parameters. And I only sent once one of them, so I'm just retrieving only one parameter. And you can see here integer count the parameter and we are looping there is the outer loop loops 100 times and the inner loop loops uh, 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 depending on the count value that's being passed and you could see here that whenever the inner loop is done we publish the progress by send by calling publish progress and i'm sending it i plus one which is i goes from 0 to uh, 99 so you, it will publish the progress and then we're returning count times 100 so when you publish progress this method gets called and when this method gets called you could say that you see here i am setting the the progress bar to set progress to the value that's being sent okay and then when you are done you return the count times 100 it is received here and i'm just printing a message saying that i'm done so when you look at the app the app looks very simple there is a button you click on it executes the task and you can see the progress dialog moving and then when you are done you will get a toast so this is a very simple implementation of async task but basically what you need to understand is how uh, what are uh, the functions of the different methods that you have to override uh, when implementing an async task thank you